In this video, we're going to take a look at the factor theorem and how it can be used to factor polynomials. So this is the factor theorem. I'm going to talk about a, a slightly uh, extension of it or more of it on the next page. If p of b equals 0, then x minus b is a factor of the polynomial we're calling p of x. And so what p of b means is we substitute the number b in place of x in the polynomial. And if it equals 0, then that means the remainder is 0. So if that means that if we're dividing by x minus b, the remainder is going to be 0, which implies that x minus b is a factor. Just like with dividing whole numbers, if you divide, for example, 5 into 20, it goes in evenly with the remainder of 0, and that's why we call 5 a factor of 20. So in the first example, we're asked to factor 3x cubed minus x squared minus 10x plus 8. So we would try to trying to find a, uh, a number that works to give a remainder of 0. Try factors of 8, the 8, the constant, and the end, which could be plus or minus 1, plus or minus 2, plus or minus 4, or plus or minus 8. 8 kind of an interesting number because it actually has 8 factors. So for example, uh, let's, here, let's write out our polynomial here. So here's our polynomial. So I'm just going to pick randomly a number, and uh, I'm going to use 4, for example. So we're, what we're doing right now is checking to see if x minus 4 gets a remainder of 0, and whether then x minus 4 is a factor. And so if we calculate this out, 4 cubed times 3 is 192. Uh, 4 squared is 16. 10 times 4 is 40, plus 8. And if you evaluate that, you get 144. So the remainder isn't 0. So that implies that x minus 4 isn't, is not a factor of the polynomial, because we did not get even close to 0 at all for the remainder. Remember, we're trying to get this to be 0. p of b equals 0. So x minus 4 is not a factor of the polynomial. Now, when I do try to factor, um, I often just use synthetic division. And I'm going to show you something on the next page to quicken this process up a little bit. But often, if you don't have that ability or option, it's really just trial and error. We already showed that 4 didn't work. So let's do, uh, and if you want to do long division, you can. One of the nice things about synthetic division, and I will show this in both examples, is once you start getting it to work, you can actually just continue the division on and on and on. You can't do that with long division. So let's pick another random number. For example, uh, we got plus or minus 2 here. So let's see if negative 2 works. And again, I could have put negative 2 in here too to see if the remainder is 0. The nice thing about the synthetic division, if your remainder is 0, well, you've already done the division. So let's bring this 3 down. Uh, 3 times negative 2 is negative 6. And we'll add that to the negative 1 to give us negative 7 here. Negative 7 times negative 2 is, ne is uh, positive 14. So we add that to negative 10 to give us uh, positive 4. And 4 times negative 2 is negative 8. And 8 and negative 8 add to 0. So we do get a remainder of 0. So if we had, had substitute negative 2 in here, we would have got a value of 0. So what this means right now is that x plus 2 is a factor. And what's uh, what's what well the answer really is 3x squared minus 7x plus 4 so we have this trinomial left now if you want to factor that by conventional methods by the method of decomposition or trial and error or the Australian method whatever method you like you could but I'm going to just continue the synthetic division like like I was talking about a moment ago and so you okay so we've already we've seen that 4 doesn't work negative 2 does so let's try 1 and again this is just trial and error. You might try negative 1 and find it won't work, but actually 1 will. So we'll bring the 3 down. 1 times 3 is 3. Add to negative 7, you get negative 4. Negative 1 times 1, negative 4 times 1 is negative 4, and we do get a remainder of 0. So x minus 1 will be a factor. So if we're going to write out the factors, then this cubic polynomial will factor into, and negative 2 works, so x plus 2 is a factor. 1 worked. So that means that uh, x minus 1 is a factor. And we have this 3, negative 4 at the bottom, so 3x minus 4 is another factor. So those are the three uh, binomial factors of this cubic polynomial. Now, 
This is the other kind of part, and I have actually could have showed this in the first page, but I kind of want to break it down to two parts here. If, uh, if you try uh, some fraction, well, I'll call it B over A, in the polynomial and you get a remainder of 0, then that would mean that AX minus B, so the denominator is actually the coefficient of X in the binomial, AX minus B would be a factor of the polynomial. And I could have actually shown this on the previous page with that last factor, the 3x minus 4 one, because uh, uh, that, that would have worked as well. But I, did, I just, well, one step at a time. So in this example, we're asked to factor 3x to the fourth minus 8x cubed minus 17x squared plus 2x plus 8. And so we'll try factors of plus or minus 8 over plus or minus 3. And so the factors of 8 are 1, 2, 4, and 8 over 3, or 1, 2, 4, and 8 over 1, because the factors of 3 are either 3 plus or minus 3 or plus or minus 1. Now, since these have denominators of 1, you actually could write this as plus or minus 1, plus or minus 2, plus or minus 4, and plus or minus 8. You don't really need to leave the denominators of 1 there. So, so there's actually, in this case, 16 different numbers that could work. Now, something I want to show you, if you have this option, a way you can speed this up a bit, is if you have any graphing technology, either on a, uh, a computer or a handheld graphing calculator, then the x-intercepts are the numbers that should work. Okay, so you don't have to necessarily try all 16 of these. So, notice the, uh, the root or x-intercept of negative 1 here is actually now when the graph just comes down and touches but doesn't cross that implies that you've actually got a double root and I'll get into that in the synthetic division there should be another root between 0 and 1 a little closer to 1 than 0 and there should be one at 4 one two, the scale on the x-axis here is 1 so that's 1 2 3 this would be 4 and so let's uh, start the synthetic division and my whole goal here is to show on this page or one of the things is that a fraction can work here and what to do with that. And the reason I would try two thirds is that, uh, like of, of these two fractions between zero and one, it one third would be about here. So this is more like two thirds. So that's why I'm trying two thirds. So I'll bring the three down and we're going to uh, multiply the two thirds by three. So let's uh, do that. So two thirds times the 3. So 3 goes into 3 once and then 2 times 1 would be 2. So we'll put a 2 here and add the negative 8 to the 2 to give us negative 6. So now we need to multiply that negative 6 by the 2 thirds. So 2 thirds times negative 6. Now 3 goes into negative 6, negative 2 times. So negative 2 times 2 would be negative 4. And we'll add that to the negative 17 above it to give us negative 21. So now we need to multiply 2 thirds by that negative 21. So 3 goes into negative 21, negative 7 times. And 2 times negative 7 would be negative 14 we'll put here. And we'll add that to the 2 above it to give us negative 12. And so one last time, we need to multiply the 2 thirds by that negative 12. So 3 goes into uh, negative 12, negative 4 times. So, and I'm going to go back to my pointer here. So 2 times negative 4 is negative 8. Adding to the 8 above, we get a remainder of 0. So the 2 thirds does work, and so that's going to give us uh, one of our factors. Now, the next one I want to do is this negative 1. As I said a moment ago, this actually implies a double root, so because it just comes down and touches but doesn't cross the x-axis. So let's do a synthetic division again, and we'll use the negative 1. And so we bring down the 3. 3 times negative 1 would be negative 3. Negative 6 and negative 3 add to negative 9. Negative 9 times negative 1 would be a positive 9 here. So we add negative 21 and the 9, so we get negative 12. And negative 12 times negative 1 is positive 12. Adding here, we get a remainder of 0. And so one more time, I'm going to do the uh, negative 1, because it's supposed to go in twice, be a double factor. So bring the 3 down. Negative 1 times 3 is negative 3. Adding here, we get uh, negative 12. Negative 1 times negative 12 is positive 12 and we add again to get a remainder of 0.
So three zeros, all of those worked. So, of course, we're trying to factor here, so we're going to write out the factors. So here's our original polynomial. Now, I'm going to write the, uh, both these imply that x plus 1 is a factor twice. So it would be x plus 1 squared. Now, you could write out uh, the x plus 1 twice if you wanted to. Uh, x, uh, the 2 thirds work, so x minus 2 thirds is a factor. And 3 negative 12 means 3x minus 12 is a factor. Now, I don't want this to have a fraction in it. And notice that 3 divides into this evenly, so we can actually common factor a 3 out of the 3x minus 12. So if we factor a, um, a 3 out of the 3x, we get x, and a 3 out of negative 12, we get negative 4. So now what we want to do is expand that 3 into the x minus 2 thirds. So 3 times the x will be 3x, and when we multiply the 2 thirds by 3, the 3's divide out, and we get just minus 2 after that uh, 3x. So the factors will be x plus 1 squared, or 2x plus 1's multiplied, 3x minus 2, and then x minus 4 in the end. And so that now is completely factored. And that's the end of the video.